I approached his OT and I said, can colors trigger a child? And she said, absolutely. And that kind of like, it was like a light bulb, like an aha moment for me where I was like, oh my God. And so then I started to look into lighting, color, um, furniture placement, um, and you know, how the senses, you know, um, how it affects a child. So I just, I immerse myself in this and it actually, and I painted his room and I, you know, it was like a DIY project where I just redid his room and it made a really big difference, yeah. Yeah. whether they have ADHD, sensory processing disorder, special needs, anything kids need structure. So they have structure in school and they do very well with that. So when they come home, all of a sudden there's no structure, right? Yeah. And when they walk into a playroom, they want to know where to go. Mm -hmm. So if there's too much, then they, some kids get overwhelmed and they just shut down. Mm -hmm. And some kids will just kind of, you know, empty out the bins and then there's a mess. They play with whatever and then they leave. Mm -hmm. But if you create stations then it's much more organized. It's easier for them to also stay focused because they can move from one place to the next. I am very self-aware and I have, I mean, I have a background in psychology. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Um, and <laughs> I always found psychology very interesting and s people watching and behavior and you know, it's fascinating to me. Um, but my self-awareness and my emotional intelligence has kind of, come about from past experiences of childhood where there wasn't appropriate communication in the home. Mm -hmm. My needs were never met. Mm -hmm. um, and growing up, you were able to differentiate somehow. I was able to see my friends and their parents and what they gave them versus what I got. And I was like, there's something different. Yeah. I had postpartum depression after my first son. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go on medication and, you know, it was in bed. I couldn't get up and it was like a few months. It was like four months or so postpartum. And my husband said, you, you like, you're not the same. And I said, um, I went to the doctor and I said, I can cry on cue. <laughs> and so he said, all right, take medication. And then I can, I started therapy again and once I took medication, it kind of lifted off that cloud, but I was able to just not only get through it, but just kind of push through it. Mm -hmm. So it's been a journey of working on myself. A few women have said, you know, I think I had postpartum depression, but I never did anything about it. Kind of like you. And I'm like, if you felt bad, like, why didn't you go for help? Mm -hmm. You know, what I felt was literally it looked like heavy feeling in my chest. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to go to bed and also intrusive thoughts, mm -hmm. which was the scariest part where it's just controlling you. You can't get out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once I took medication, I was like, I actually feel the best I've ever felt. Yeah. You know? And now I want to get out of it and feel better. Yeah. yeah. Also, if you, if you fill it out on a form, you're kind of like declaring yes. I'm unwell Yes, 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 yes. And a lot of moms are like, I could do this. I'm fine. It's hard, but I'm fine. Yeah. Whereas it's okay to say, I'm not fine. I need more.